Welcome to the newsroom. I'm Owen Poindexter, senior writer with Front Office Sports. We've done a couple of heavy episodes recently, so this one's going to be a little lighter, a little more fun. We're going to be talking about the growth of cricket in the United States. We're going to have our analyst, Ronan Einbinder, on, see if he can convince me that cricket really is going to become a thing in the U.S. Before we get to that, I have a, a quick request. This episode is coming out on my birthday, and you can get me a birthday present while you're listening to this in the next, like, 30 seconds. Just go to your podcast app right now, leave us a rating. If you're enjoying the show, leave us a review. And even if you're not enjoying the show, for some reason you're here, leave us some feedback. I'd love to hear how things are going. So happy birthday to me, and uh, please leave us a rating or review. And so we'll get into that. We'll get into cricket, and first a quick word from our sponsor. 2000. 2008, 2022. When it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. Dot com crash, housing crash, and the roller coaster we're going through right now. One thing is certain it's a dangerous time to not know your numbers. But over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting, so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need all in one place. So how do you prepare for uncertain times? The answer, NetSuite. NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your business processes, and easily see where to save money. That's why 93% of customers say they improve their visibility and control when they upgraded to NetSuite. What are you waiting for? Right now, NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash the newsroom right now. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. Hey, it's Abigail Gentra, host of The Lead Off, where front office sports breaks down the biggest stories of the day, where sports influences business and culture. We give the latest details on topics ranging from college and pro sports to fitness and supplements. Tune into The Lead Off daily for continued updates on teams, leagues, and companies making power moves in the industry. Find The Lead Off on Apple, Spotify, and front office sports. All right, let's get into it. I'm joined today by our analyst at Front Office Sports, Ronan Einbinder. Ronan, how's it going? Hey, Owen, thank you for having me. How are you? I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, So, um, yeah, I I wanted to do a cricket episode because you had a a thread on Twitter that completely blew up uh, about Major League Cricket, what it's doing, why uh, we're going to be seeing cricket in the U.S. before too long. Uh, but actually, I wanted to start with another of your tweets. This is turning into an infomercial for your Twitter account. Um, <laughs> uh, so FTX is in the process of exploding before our eyes, which is one of the the great joys of uh, modern living is occasionally you just get to, to watch uh, like an explosion, a corporate explosion in real time. Joy being, I hope we understand. I'm using the term ironically here. Um, but, um, but yeah, you, you brought up something interesting, which I've been kind of thinking about. Which so FTX had a lot of sports deals. Obviously, the Miami Heat arena was FTX Arena until very recently. Um, they're going to find a new name. Uh, they had the umpire patches for uh, for Major League Baseball. They had a number of other or sports deals. And, and you said, you know, maybe these teams, these leagues, should be doing a little bit of due diligence on who they're doing business with. Uh, obviously, it's a complex issue because FTX was trusted and even revered by by many but yeah i just wanted to get your thoughts on that yeah like my as my tweet said i think that um or or my thoughts were that sports properties in some way should be held accountable like we can't uh let them take advantage of uh fan loyalty because i think like fans are actually different they're not like regular customers if you think about it the whole like fan loyalty element and how they engage with with sports and how they Uh, are really into it, you know, they're very vulnerable in some ways to what they're exposed to. And FDX, man, they bought airtime during the Super Bowl for like 7 million. And and you don't know how many people or how much money uh, was invested into FDX because of that, or how much of that has has, uh, been translated to losses now with the FDX. So I'm actually writing about, uh, about this, a pro report this week. Uh, so more on that coming up. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe to Pro if you want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, in short, I think that um, that sports organizations should at least be held accountable in some way uh, with regards to sponsoring, uh, endorsing, or being affiliated in one way or another with things that uh, you know have some specific risk 
or could be eventually be discovered as scams uh, one way or another. But yeah, I think this is going to be an interesting conversation that it's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, I think that the, the report is going to be interesting. So make sure you check it out. Yeah, yeah, I'm of two minds on this whole thing. And when, when like, a, you know, an athlete, a celebrity endorses a car company or like a watch or something, it's one, you're like, okay, yeah, th this is they're probably fine. Like this watch isn't going to explode in your face. Hopefully the car won't either. But also we have regulators like for things like cars yeah. and airplanes. You trust that the airplane is going to be fine when you get in it because it's been through all these government processes that you don't even know about, but you trust that they have happened. Whereas with crypto, Correct. we're we're still in like crazy land where most people don't really understand what it is. It kind of looks like a pyramid scheme. Some of it definitely looks like a pyramid scheme. Some of it seems to have some real world applications. But then you have people like Tom Brady, Steph Curry, like Matt Damon, who look pretty bad right now because they're yeah. the ones saying like, this thing's cool. Get in on it. You can make some money. And then it all blows up in their faces. And, you know, they lost money, too, on this, but they're fine. Other people are, are less fine. So, yeah, my, my first instinct is, well, that's what regulators are for. Um, but yeah, no one's really gotten a good answer as to how we're regulating crypto right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's an inherently risky space, but, um, some, some athletes put their, uh, credibility on the line and, you know, it, it's kind of an awakening moment, I think, for a lot of people in the economy, but I think a lot of people are just making money because this was, prices were going up, everyone was happy, and uh, when it crashes, it's like, yeah, what, what were we investing in exactly? What, what was this yeah. whole thing? Was this all some weird joke? Um, all right, so that aside, obviously we could do like eight <laughs> podcasts on this whole saga, but, um, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to talk about cricket. So um, your most recent front office, pro, front office sports pro report uh, was about Major League Cricket and how cricket is going to be a thing in the United States. So convince me that cricket is going to be a thing in the United States. Why? Why should I believe this? Well, first of all, if you go if you go in, into my Twitter account and you see just the amount of engagement that this uh, uh, cricket thread had, man, there's something about it. You know, it, just from that, you can see that there's some excitement. That, that you can see that there's some uh, passion element for all the cricket fans out there, uh, particularly you know in Southeast Asia. Uh, and I think, you know, it, it all comes back to going back to their history, the history of cricket. Cricket is an ancient sport. If you think about it, you know, compared, of course, to American sports, uh, which all started like around the, the 19th century, century, cricket is ancient. They, they actually started in, in the 17th century. And some, some people argue that it even started before uh, in England. Um, and the game's spread out back in the day uh you know through like uh their their, their colonization uh uh with through different like traders and the military and some you know uh some other people that started moving from britain they took the sport to different places in southeast asia right so that's how it spread out and and it's funny because uh when you read about the story of cricket um the first thing you realize is that when it got to india the the prince the, the 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 prince there was absolutely like stunned he was like mesmerized he was like wow this is amazing so he invested a lot of money he wanted it everywhere so that's how it kind of like started growing there um but then like it really never made it to the US and that's uh that's the whole like interesting part right because the US is you can argue the biggest or the greatest sports economy in the world with some of the biggest leagues, the biggest players, the most you know, popular franchises and the most valuable uh, teams in the world, in the world of sports. Um, and so what happened to cricket? Like, why is cricket this like huge game in, in Asia? And it never really became a thing in the U.S. And, you know, many people argue that actually is because baseball, which could be, you know, thought of as an iteration of cricket because it's kind of similar. Like there's yeah. there's a couple of things that are similar between those games. Baseball is huge in the U.S. Many, many Americans will actually argue that baseball is the biggest sport in the U.S. And it could be because uh, baseball, you know, took the realm of uh, what cricket would have become in the U.S. and get, it got adapted in a different iteration set with different rules and a couple of different settings. Um, and then it, it conquered the whole like space that cricket would have 
ever dreamed or imagined, right? But now, I think that now uh, there's an opportunity for new sports leagues, for new sports to come into the U.S. Like you've seen, you've seen pickleball. I think you you, you talked about this in one of the other episodes. Um, and there's also like rugby coming in, and now cricket, which is you know we can, we can we we're gonna get into it. But there's an actual organization with actual people with knowledge in the space and with you know huge investment that are bringing it bringing it in so it's it's likely that it will succeed you know but it's it's very important to go back to the history uh, of cricket to understand just how popular it has become uh, in Asia to understand why it will make sense to bring it to the US yeah no I, I think that's a good point um, like if you compare it to the the pickleball craze if pickleball just somehow goes away in like six months I'm not saying it will I don't think it will but it'll be like <laughs> okay I mean, we didn't even know what it was a year ago. So, like, it's not that crazy that now it's gone. Or, like, disc golf. Yeah. There's, like, a bunch of these emerging sports. Um, and I think we'll get into the media side of this in a bit. But um, I think the whole streaming world, like YouTube, TikTok, all of that kind of opens up more space for, you know, you can do go beyond, the, like, the big four sports in the U.S. You can go beyond soccer. Uh, there's there's more more room in the media world now. Um, but uh, But cricket's not going away. Like... Like in countries can rise and fall, and cricket will will still be around on some level. So, in terms of making major league cricket, the U.S. league, uh, a thing that you know people are going to, there are regular teams, there are fans, there are athletes. How what what's the game plan for that? Yeah, well, I actually spoke with uh, with the team at MLC, the major league cricket here in the U.S. Um, and it was really interesting because they are really engaged. They are they know what they're doing. The team is fantastic. They they have a lot of experience in this. And the way they're thinking about it, it's very interesting because they're 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 not you know throwing things out without like uh, like a plan. They are very careful on the way that they're doing. They're they're taking their time. They're not rushing away. They're raising the amount of money that will get them through enough seasons. You know they're doing things. It seems like they're doing things slowly to be able to just establish some good foundations in the U.S. and then, you know, be able to explore uh, how big it can really get. Um, so one of the things that, that pops out, and I wrote about this on Pro, is that they uh, made sure, they made they, they, they assured they had um, a minor league before uh, in the U.S. that was fully operational, fully independent, and that could, you know, have games bring in you know young players and and be you know enough uh well established to, to to have it as a trial set or something um so this is something they've done since uh since the early 2021 and um and they've you know for two years already they've been doing uh they've been playing games they've been bringing players they've been developing youth academies and uh training uh you know uh, facilities and they've brought in coaches so the whole like minor league is it was like kind of like a testing ground for them uh where they you know iterated over the product and the experience a little bit without being like super professional or bringing the best players in the world or or anything else it's 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 kind of like thinking if you if you compare it to like a like a uh, like a business like let's say like a, a regular industrial like uh, metal producer is like if they would put up the, the 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 factory or the mine to to mine the the steel first and then you know build the cars at the end uh, you don't start with the cars you start with the steel so this vertical integration of of uh of developing talent developing a league was really interesting and this is this is what they told me right they wanted it to test it first uh they they closed sponsors with it i think toyota and uh Sunoku, and uh, some Sling TV was also part of like the partnerships. So like they, they started creating this synergy, this commercial synergy only through the minor league, you know, to create interest, to, to bring in some different partners, to start uh, bringing in some revenues. And, you know, that's, that's part of the plan. And that's something they've done since 2021. And so now that they have that, and now that they've, you know, established uh, I think they have 20 cities where, where they're developing players, when they, where they're developing young, you know, cricket uh, players. I think that that's also opening up 
or tapping into like communities, right? To create fan bases, to create uh, new relationships with the community, right? Uh, you're, you're starting to get people accustomed to uh, seeing cricket stadiums and seeing, you know, some advertisements or posters around like cricket and cricket games and come watch this and, and uh, etc. So that, that development of the community approach, the fan base approach, that's also really important because if you think about it, like, uh, there's a stat here and, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think that the U S has over like 20 million cricket fans, uh, many of which I'm sure they come from like South East, uh, Asian, um, or it just, uh, Asian roots in some way, like immigrants or some way. Um, but if you have this like really solid existing, like fan base, like how do you develop it? Right. You have to start getting the product to them. Um, so if you, if you just throw, throw it out there, you don't know how many of, the, of them are going to come. You don't know if they're going to be engaged or not. You don't know how much content they need. Um, so they're just doing it slowly They're you, you know, they're putting it out there. They're uh, exploring marketing opportunities to bring new people into like stadiums and everything. So this like holistic approach that uh, I'm talking about here, they are very confident around it. And I think that that's, you know, a very key element of their plan uh, to now that uh, in, in summer of 2023, the major league is going to is going to happen. I think that that's going to help them a lot to see, you know, how well they uh, were able to set those roots in their game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's a really interesting strategy. And I mean, it's it's a really great way to do it. If you have the time and you have the runway you have the funding, um, I mean, if you have like a runway of like two or three years and it's like, OK, yeah, just like get as big as you can, as fast as you can and hope you can kind of backfill the rest. But to start with the foundation, which, you know, to use the infrastructure metaphor, seems like a better idea. Um, yeah, then you can you know, de start to develop a fan base, develop a talent base, make mistakes. Like you're going to screw yeah. something up with a project of this size and to be able to do it quietly um, uh, and then to kind of have things more ironed out and smooth and, and to be able to explain the game to an American audience um, that, you know, j j is just a more sustainable strategy. Um, so, yeah, very, very interesting stuff there. Um, and I noticed in your, your pro report, one thing that caught my eye is if you look at the demographics, it's, it's like 18 to 35 or 34, whatever it is that, that like the young demographic is like, who's interested in this, uh, which one makes sense because if it was an older demographic, we probably would have heard of this by now. Um, but, but also, <laughs> you know, that is, um, that, you know, gives you some hope if you're major league cricket to say, okay, we can get these people interested now. They can be long-term fans. They can kind of follow us year to year. Uh, their kids eventually can become fans. And this can be a, a long-term thing. So, yeah, I, I can see the the potential, certainly, is, is there. And they seem to be going about it in a good way. Um, but what happens next? All right, so we, we've got this, this strong infrastructure of minor leagues for, like, ready to like really make the major leagues a thing, um, starting to get some corporate partners. How do you go from that to a major sport where, you know, people are talking about the games and it's, it's on, you know, major media networks and, uh, and it's just one more big U S sport. How do you get there? Yeah. Well, if you, if you, if you think about it, you, of course you need infrastructure, physical infrastructure, you need stadiums, you need facilities, training facilities, you need places, where the sport sport can actually take place and for those you actually need money right you can't you can't build anything or you can't uh, do any of those things without capital and this is something that they've done uh, as well recently they raised uh, i think it was 120 million uh and, and and when you look at the list of investors it's super interesting right they r raised money from the ceo of microsoft the, C the ceo of adobe uh, a couple of billionaires in the U.S. and those guys are have uh, many of them have uh, ties, uh, whether that's you know family ties or their origins or their roots um, to Southeast Asia. So they know they know how how cricket how cricket can become a huge thing, and they're interested in in making it happen uh, in the U.S. as well because they've seen how it happens in the, in Asia, right? So I think that having those key investors from uh, you know the tech sector in the US that are well positioned that are wealthy that you know have uh, a, a great network that can bring in partners with technology and that can bring in tools to help develop the league and help develop uh, the fan engagement and and essentially just grow grow the fine the fan base even outside the US um, 
if you look at that, at that, then it makes sense, right? Because you're thinking, uh, you think about uh, joining forces with the right people, right? You, it's not about, it's not only needing the right infrastructure, you also need the right people. And these guys have, have been able to, uh, to get that. And some, some of the other um, factors that I think give value to, to, to these guys is that even the co-founders, uh, which I, 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 I do not recall the names, um, but they have some experience with cricket. They actually are the founders of uh, Willow TV, which is uh, the biggest content cricket content providers in the US. They have, I think, over 4, four million uh, households uh, that watch cricket through their platform. Um, so they know the game, they know the, the media element of the game, they have an existing subscriber base, and they're going to use that and leverage that, um, that media uh, stool to then provide more content and expand the fan base. So, so I think it goes like this, it goes the right infrastructure with the right capital and the right people. And a media infrastructure, like a media uh, stool to stand uh, with. So if you like com combine all these things uh, that they have and that they've built, they've built in the last couple of months, and that they've uh, been looking for in terms of like the investment and everything, that makes a lot of sense. And if you mix that with like the minor league, which is like the holistic approach we're just discussing, like you have this like set or this this major framework of things that are it seems like they are aligned right to happen right to develop and establish the league and, and and play the first game so once like it seems like once all of these things are set it would be easier for them to also uh you know land partnerships that could bring in you know millions of dollars a year that they can also develop franchises that could sell uh, naming rights for their stadiums. They can also, uh, you know, tap into like the biggest and most influential uh, personalities in the game. Maybe they bring. Oh, and this is also this is also something interesting uh, that I didn't know about cricket, and, and and maybe you don't know it as well. Is that cricket seasons are actually super short. They don't last more than three to six weeks. It's not like an NFL season that lasts lasts for six months, or you know MLB that lasts for lasts for eight or something. These seasons are super short. These these seasons are not long more than they don't last more than two months. So that gives them an, an opportunity to bring in some of the talent, um, you know, some of the best players in the world, hire them for just the, the three four weeks that the the, turn, the tournament is going to happen. And then bring them, have them play, and, and you know, and um, create content out of it, and sell that. So, you know, if you think of cricket as this like sport that is a little bit different than what we're used to, but that they have already, Major League Cricket has uh, so many of the good factors that will help them grow. Like you start seeing it, you start being like, okay, that makes sense. Oh, okay, that's actually going to help them. Oh, that's going to help them land. A multi-million dollar partnerships or oh, that's uh and uh, that's that's gonna help them land you know media rights or or streaming rights for a couple of billion dollars like i don't know like but there is the potential right yeah yeah absolutely um and yeah i think there's there's a, a few things i want to dive in on there first the the geography of all this when i think of like where is cricket popular like india pakistan and you know somewhat australia parts of africa um, but just in the, in terms of a sport like that getting big in the U S I mean, it's so big in India. I mean, the, the Indian premier league, the major cricket league there is one of the most popular leagues in the world. But if you think about the sports that have gotten big recently in the U S I'd say soccer is, and, uh, and formula one, and obviously, but those are both global phenomenon, but, um, but I think of them mostly as European properties, um, at least in terms of like where the money is, where the attention is. Um, soccer, obviously, is global, but yeah. uh, the biggest leagues are all in Europe. And um, and F1, you know, is, is obviously expanding, especially in the U.S., but is, is becoming more and more of a global thing. But really became big, was was mostly big in Europe until very recently, until Drive to Survive, essentially. Um, and yeah, the, the format of it, I, I found really interesting. I learned that from your um, your pro report, and I, I just looked up the uh, the 2023 uh, Major League Cricket season, and it is from July 13th to 30th. So it's it's shorter than the World Cup, and I think that's 
um, could really work from a marketing strategy. If it's something like, you know, baseball, or hockey, it's just kind of always on. You're like, all right, who, who's yeah. playing today? Like, you know, you just like yeah. turn on the game just like absentmindedly. Um, that's cool, but it doesn't feel like an event. And people, yeah. one of the reasons people get so excited for the World Cup and for like the Olympics and watching Olympic events that they barely understand and or just, you know, like synchronized swimming. And it's like, you know, yeah. why do I care about this one thing? Well, one, it's the global phenomenon of it, but also it's because like you're only going to see this this time and then not again yeah. for another four years so making it more of a rare commodity and i think that even works to the nfl's advantage I and mean, the nfl is one of these you know you know what four to six month seasons uh that we have in the u.s but it's once a week well i guess not anymore but it's um sure. uh, they've got the you know the one game on thursday then it's mostly on sunday the one game on monday it's still it's it manages to still feel like a more rare commodity it's not every day and when it's not on sunday you might just get one game that everyone's talking about yeah. it it could be more of an event um and that sort of makes me think about the media's strategy around this and it's interesting to see upstart leagues in this day and age because obviously you still want to be on espn you want to be on you know cbs abc nbc a major network but you also have other strategies. You've got social media platforms like TikTok and Twitter. Uh, if Twitter's still a thing by the time <laughs> by July, um, but um, oh, yeah, there, there's a YouTube. There, there are other options to grow and become big. So no. yeah, talk to me a little bit about um, anything you're seeing on the the media end of this, like where where Major League Cricket might be looking in that in that realm. Yeah, sure. I mean, first of all, taking a step back and and and. Uh... And putting a little bit more of emphasis on what you said, because I think that's super important. The whole like scarcity element uh, of of just a few games being played in a short season that makes it really appealing. Something else that uh, the major league cricket has been able to done to do really well. And not sure if that was planned or that was a coincidence, or I'm, I don't know how exactly they landed it. But uh, the T20 form of the game of cricket, which is just a particular form of playing it. Um, they hold MLC holds a, a a license from the ICC, which is the International uh, Cricket Committee, uh, that they basically you know regulate uh, the sport world worldwide. They hold this license from from this association uh, that essentially allows them to do to 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 do the games of the T Twenty form of the game in the US, and that works as a patent. Like no one else can really develop the form of the game. Um, so that sets them up as, as uh, uh, with a competitive advantage because if you think about it, that raises the, the, entry lev the entry barrier to infinity because no one else can really do what they do. Uh, it's just them. So it's, it's like having like a monopoly in a huge market, um, which is a huge advantage, right? If you think about it, you, you go back to like different leagues and stuff. You, you always want to be the only one developing the product in the game. So considering that, going back to your question about like what happens in media, you know, whenever they, they're going to go to like Disney or uh, Comcast or whatever, they're going to be like, Hey, we are cricket and we are the only cricket league. That's, that's going to be able to, you know, create this T20 form of the game in the U S the U S is a massive market, but it also we're going to be able to expand this worldwide. Remember that cricket is the second most popular sport in the world right after soccer. According to like some data, it says that 2.5 billion people engage annually with uh, with cricket. That's that's like a lot. That's like a huge market. Yeah, that's um, like almost one in three people in the world. Almost, yeah. And I think like many of many of us in in this continent, like maybe you and I, maybe we don't really know so many people that follow cricket, or maybe you don't even heard about anything about cricket or or me. Uh, in the last couple of years, and that's because it mostly happened in Asia, right? If you ask anyone in Asia, uh, it's mostly likely that everyone they know, they follow cricket or they engage with cricket one way or another, right? So it's it's about tapping into this new market. So we're talking about an existing huge base of fans, 2.5 billion. But what about all the, all the like the rest of the, you know, this side of the world, the America side of the world uh, and the fan base that it will be able to grow? Right. So if you think about that from like a media perspective, that's huge. That's huge because you're going to be able to, you know, lock in the only uh, form of the game, which is the T20, which actually is also three hours long, which is right. It's important to bring like, up. It's not like two days the way traditional. Yeah. Can be. It's, yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's three hours, similar to what you you know go and experience in a baseball, basketball, NFL match uh, nowadays. So it's not it's not out of like what you know, uh, which is also something good for the US US customer. Um, and they well, they will be able to just sell sell these packages for. I, I'm sure they we're gonna see some huge packages like similar. Not sure if, if like the NFL sizes or like the NBA's at least in the beginning. But I'm sure like if, if down the line it shows popularity, it shows that it can replicate the effects that it had in Asia and that people here are engaged and they love it, which by, you know, just looking at my thread, how it blew up and how many people were just engaged and excited about what I wrote. Um, if that re effect can be replicated in the US, I'm sure that these deals are going to go for, for billions of dollars, if not, if not more, you know, so. Um, the, the whole media strategy, the whole like YouTube and TikTok, I think that that's also inherent in, in what MLC is thinking about. Um, but again, like, I think that these guys are very slow in the, in the way they, they, they think about developing, like they don't want to like start, you know, streaming their games in like Twitter or something. They want to like build a, a, a good foundation, build a, uh, a solid product, uh, based off, you know, uh, good investment, good, uh, infrastructure, the right people, the right set of partners. Uh, I'm sure that we're going to be hearing about, you know, who are going to be the commercial partners, uh, which I hope it's not going to be some, uh, crypto, <laughs> crypto exchange, <laughs> well, probably not uh, but anymore. you never know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think we're going to be hearing about more, more and more about, uh, some of the partnerships they're, they're going to be developing with like huge corporate corporations in the U S naming rights. Maybe they're going to, they're going to, there's going to be more investment from foreigners, maybe some, you know, I Indian billionaires are going to come in and they want to, you know, build uh, specific training facilities for, for the best players. So you, you're going to see the, the snowball, uh, effect on, on, on cricket, uh, in the U S in the next couple of months, up, up until the launch of, of the first, uh, first league, uh, we, we're going to see a snowball effect of, partners, investment, uh, money coming in, more and more media coverage. I mean, I think we're one of the first ones that uh, cover the Major League Cricket. Like, I haven't read any other piece as good as ours uh, on it, but I think we're going to see more and more, you know, ESPN talking about it. We're going to be uh, seeing it, you know, everywhere in, in Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. You're going to hear more about it, but there, it's all about the, you know, the efforts that they've been doing for the last couple of years. Like, it's not... It's not like an overnight success, right? It's not because, oh, cricket is huge and that's why it's going to be huge in the US. No, this, this is something that has been uh, building up for a couple of years with the right people, the right infrastructure, the right media platforms and everything. So it's it's kind of like the, 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 the overnight success, but that's 10 years in the making, or you can argue that it's maybe four or five centuries in the ma making. But now it's like, now's the time they're going to bring it to the US. And I think that's that's the interesting part. Yeah, yeah, the sort of media negotiations as they as they unfold will be pretty interesting there. Because if I'm a media property, I I want the global streaming rights. That's you know yeah. the U.S. rights. Okay, yeah, no, you toss them in if maybe, but um, <laughs> but yeah, the for now I'm I'm thinking global on that. Um, yeah, fascinating stuff. Thank you so much, Ronan. Uh, we'll definitely be keeping an eye on this story as it unfolds, and it's gonna be one of those ones where you can you'll be able to forget about it for a little while and then all of a sudden it'll, it'll come back and be like, oh yeah, no, this, 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 this may be going to be a real thing after all. Thank you so much for listening to the newsroom. Uh, please, we're going to come at you every Thursday with the biggest topics in the sports business world. Also check out other, our podcast, The Lead Off and My Other Passion to keep you up to date on everything that's going on in this world, some of the most intriguing stories and just the biggest stories that are out there. And also, if you haven't already, please, uh, as a birthday present to me or just because you want to leave us a rating or review, please leave us a rating or review on the podcast app you're listening to right now. And we'll see you next week.